You know what's driving me nuts? That I'm the better looking one? <laughs> no. Waiting to check out at the grocery store. When I'm hungry, my instincts kick in and I just want to smash through the line. Well, you should make things safer for all of us and try almonds. They have four grams of hunger slaying fiber, which can be game changing, even for a man of your stature. Eh, not a bad idea. But what if I'm in line waiting to buy almonds? Stick to the self checkout and remember to breathe. California almonds. Own your everyday. Every day. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Well, if anybody deserves uh, the right to stick their chest out and their chest hair in the process a little bit, it is certainly Ryan Fitzpatrick. Man. Just li- I just love his attitude of yeah. what Ryan Fitzpatrick, been in the league forever, and just understands completely. I've had highs, I've had lows. I'm going to enjoy the highs. Yeah. And right now he is on one. I mean that that dude has been through it all. I, Very I, cool I, to see. Outside of Patrick Mahomes, no one is riding a higher high than Ryan Fitzpatrick right now. And you're right. That's the point. <laughs> he knows how this eventually turns. Right. He knows that it's going to happen because it's happened to him a gazillion times. So what's the old saying? Ride ride the horse until she bucks you off. Yeah. Ride this horse. Ri- Ryan, ride this horse, man. Ride this horse. He is completing 78% of his <laughs> passes. Eight touchdowns and one interception. He's averaging 405 yards a game. I mean, it's crazy. And and the first week, they did it in New Orleans. Right. In New Orleans, you know, and, and, and that shootout there. And then they do it against the Super Bowl, defending Super Bowl champs this past week. It's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, listen, they, he's, it's just, a, it's just a lot of fun to see. And by the way, if you didn't know the outfit that he wore post game, that was actually Deshaun Jackson's outfit. Right, right. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I, I can almost guarantee you does not own an outfit like that. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he is enjoying this as he should because you never know when things are going to turn. Now we believe it's a long term trend for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe not on this record pace, but you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick's career, as you said, there have been some really good highs and some really bad lows. So Plus he's, he's 30, what, 35, 36 yeah. years old and been at this yeah. a long, long time. Enjoy yeah. this as long as yeah. you can, my friend. We got a lot to get to, including a guy just like Ryan Fitzpatrick who probably enjoyed this weekend a oh, lot. Oh my God. We'll get to that in just a minute, but first, Mike, let's start with what's trending. And the Cowboys' Dak Prescott said it wasn't just him, but the team accepted the challenge. Remember, safety Landon Collins said the defensive game plan was to take Ezekiel Elliott out of the game and put pressure on Prescott. Well, he opened up the game on the third play with a 64-yard touchdown throw, and Elliott also had a rushing touchdown. Listen, this was a nice win for them, a a big throw, a a big hit play to Tavon Austin, but that was really about it. The defense had six sacks in this one. This wasn't a pretty game. I think that this one showed more that... This is what the Dallas Cowboys are. They're, and, and it's nothing new. I mean, we, we're not shocked at this. They're a team that wants to live by the run right. and base everything off of that and get a couple of hits down the field like they did with Tavon Austin. And then other than that, just be kind of methodical. That's what the Cowboys are. And then hope your defense continues to get better. Six sacks, pretty darn good on their side of it. And I think we found out while there was – so I think Cowboys – this is what they are, and the Giants. I think the hope was, we hope they're more than what we thought. What we thought, right? And they're not right now. No, they're not. You know, you, you lose your your, your O line is already revamped. Then you lose your center last night. Looked like to a busted leg. They put the air cast. The on air him. cast is usually not usually, a good sign. Yeah. So already a revamped line that has been struggling, and now your center is gone. This offense, just you expect the big playability with Odell Beckham, but it was fourteen little swing passes. Or short passes to Saquon, Saquon. Barkley. First time uh, uh, for the Giants, at least 10 rushes and 10 catches since 03 and Tiki Barber. This is just this. Unfortunately, I think for Giant fans, you're seeing kind of you thought you'd see something different, and you're just not. And I don't know if you're going to. No. And look, for the Giants offensive line to go up the first two weeks against obviously Jacksonville's front seven, we know how good they are. This Cowboys front seven is going to be very good, Mike. And remember, they still, Randy, Randy Gregory was out. There may be an issue with him uh, going forward that they have to deal with. But you put him back into the lineup with the linebackers they've got now. Sean Lee is healthy. J- Jalen Smith looks more like he was a little bit at Notre Dame. You get Leighton Van Der Esch. This front seven for the Cowboys, Demarcus Lawrence and those guys, they're going to apply pressure on people all season long. I agree. And I, I think this this <clears throat> division could be open. I think Philly's still at the top of that. Washington laid an egg offensively. Yeah. 
the Giants, more and more, Trey, if this season isn't going well, they're going to be saying, man, we should have taken a quarterback. Not that, not to say, Eli, you know, we're done with you. You know, it would be like, you, you know what? Term. But Eli is only there a couple of more years. We're not doing well right now. Maybe we should have started the clock on that new quarterback who thought maybe could be a franchise quarterback. At the end of the year, if Saquon doesn't get better at doing those four, five, and six yard runs, and Darnold. And a lot of it's not play. on him. No, it's not. That O line, but, but, you know, he averaged two, two some yards a carry. Exactly. Yesterday. Yeah. And if, and if Darnold continues to be what people think he's going to be, it's going to be a hard thing to think about passing on a quarterback, especially when, the next team took them, and they play in your building. Well, eight months later, and with much less on the line, the Jacksonville Jaguars finally found a way to close out Tom Brady and the Patriots, and it's by letting Blake Bortles be Blake Bortles. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, this guy won the weekend, Mahomes, Ed Orgeron, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Blake Bortles, they basically said to him, Mike, what we didn't let you do in the AFC Championship game, we're going to let you do Sunday. Or what we didn't let you do week one is we're going to let you do week two, which is go out and win us the game in the second half. And boy, did he respond. Sure did. Threw the ball 45 times. 45 times. And this wasn't a game like where all of a sudden you're like, "Uh uh-oh, we got to start launching the ball like in Pittsburgh where Ben throws it, what, 60-plus times because before you know it, they're down 21 nothing, even though they did come back and tie that one up. They ran it 24 times, averaged over four yards a carry. But what they did, I was stunned. With the crossing routes that worked and – Either New England didn't, adjust, they didn't obviously adjust well enough, or Jacksonville just kept out, obviously out executing them. They just kept doing it over and over again. I was, I rarely see a New England team if they get beat. You rarely see them get beat, but when they get beat, get beat by the same thing happening right. to them. And that's Crossing what was routes. happening to them. It was, it was very, very surprising to see. And kudos to Jacksonville. You know, they have a great defense. They did it without Fournette. And they had T.J. Yeldon back there, who averaged under four yards uh, per carry in this one. But Blake Bortles, they let it, let him let it fly a little bit, and we've seen him look good at times, no yes. doubt about it. It's the consistency factor that can get you. Yeah, we had that stretch last yeah. year where he had a couple of games, I think three straight, uh, over 300 yards and no interceptions. But he made critical th- – and look, the other thing that he can do, he can run a little bit now. And he, he picked can. up a couple of first downs as well. But this was a complete team effort. In Jacksonville, out executing New England, without a doubt, and that's something you don't say a lot. Absolutely, that that is such a key point. Uh, they they did they uh, they they just beat them. They were the better team. Yeah, and for Blake Bortles, he could sit there and do a whole "I told you so" or even worse to a lot, of, including me. Yeah, because I I had thought, man, they might should move on from Blake Bortles if they want to get where they want to go. And at least for this week, he he looked fantastic. And kudos to him and that team for what they did. Well, listen, uh, we might have found Tom Brady's kryptonite. We all know he struggles in Denver. He's 4-4 yeah. four and four in Denver. The state of Florida is not his friend. Uh, he's 11-10 and 10 in his career as a starter on the road against the three Florida teams. Now, he's never lost to the Bucs, but he's 7-9 and nine against the Dolphins and now just 2-1 and one against the Jags. So, you know, we've, we've seen him go down there before – and have struggles in Miami. Shoot, man, three years ago, they lost the last two games of the regular season, which cost them having the AFC Championship game. Instead, that moved to Denver. We right. all saw that right. played out. But it it was a hot, humid day, and they never really got it going. Um, and I'm just... We, we, we've, been, we've seen this before with New England, right? I'm not going to push the panic button on the Patriots in any no. way, shape, or form. We have our, our, our good friend Ryan Clark basically saying, I'm signing up right now for an AFC championship game between Jacksonville and Patrick Mahomes in the offense of Kansas City. So am City. I going to look bad if I say I'm going to hold off not on that one, too? <laughs> not at all. Because remember, last year the Chiefs started 5-0 and and had to hang on and make the postseason and then couldn't beat the Tennessee Titans in a home playoff game. So we've seen great Septembers before from Kansas City. And just last year, just like this year, the Patriots started the season 1-1. One and one. They lost Week 1 at home to Kansas City, came back with a big win Week 2 in New Orleans, and guess what? They managed to find their way back to the Super Bowl and were one play away yeah. from winning a sixth ring. You never, ever, ever, ever judge a Bill Belichick team in September. You judge it in December. Yep. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, Golik and Wingo brought to you by 1-800-Flowers.com. Nothing makes up for your football obsession like a fresh and beautiful bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, 1-800-Flower is, is offering 36 autumn roses for 36 bucks. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. You know, Mike, we like to do this thing every Monday on Who Won the Weekend. 
Our next guest is absolutely on that list. And that's LSU's head coach Ed Orgeron joins us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Get triple action protection for optimal engine performance with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Coach O, welcome. Big, wow. big win for you guys at Jordan-Hare. What statement did your team make by that road win on Saturday? Character, unity, belief, uh, tremendous leadership, great job by assistant coaching staff, total team effort. What what a game. What a fun it game to blast. watch, too, Coach. And, and for a, a team on the road, you jump out 10 to nothing, but... Take me so that that's good going on. Take me to your message to the team and the sideline. Take us all down there. With about ten minutes ago in the third quarter, uh, Auburn gets a touchdown. Now you were up ten zip. Now you're down twenty one ten in the second half on the road. Tell me about that sideline. We talked about poise the whole week. We knew that Auburn is a fantastic football team, a great coach, a great stadium. This is a great tradition, Auburn and LSU. We will have to have poise. The whole game, and our team showed poise, came down to the last play like we knew it would, and thank God that we have our kicker, Cole Tracy. What a tremendous job by him. Yeah, you're one of the few guys on a football weekend that is celebrating yeah, the, the kicker. kicker. Trust me. How about it. Your, your, guy, your guy came through, and you absolutely needed him. You know, there was that great exchange before the season started, Coach, where someone asked you point blank, do you think you're better than a lot of people think you are? And you just said, yes, absolutely. Well, you're now the first team in 37 years to have two top 10 wins in the first three weeks of the season. What does that say about the team that you have in front of you right now? You know, we don't know uh, what's going to happen down the road. We're going to take it one game at a time, one day at a time. We get better. We still have a lot of things to improve on. Our quarterback is getting better. We're getting our offense to where we want it to be. We have a tremendous defense, tremendous special teams. We'll see where this thing takes us one game at a time. Talking to Ed Orgeron, head coach at LSU. Huge win at Auburn. They're 3-0, and ranked number 6 in the country. Right now, and you mentioned your quarterback, and while his stats haven't been great, certainly there have been some good throws out there, you know, to, to lead your team to a winning field goal. I uh, can't take that away from him. Stats haven't been great, hadn't, didn't turn the ball over in this game. Where are you with Joe right now in his maturation process? Well, Michael Trey, the number one stat that counts, he's three and zero, oh, and that's, exactly that's, right. uh, that says a lot about our quarterback, says a lot about his maturity. His leadership, obviously, there's a lot a lot of things that we want to do better. But winning the football game, Joe's a winner. He's poised. He's mature. He can get us in the right plane. He's very tough. Where are you with after a big win like that in letting the kids celebrate and then before you move on? Because as you said, and it's a coach's mantra, one game at a time, having them now turn the focus to the next week. You know, we have a 24-hour rule. They're going to come in today. We're going to watch the film. We're going to celebrate the good things we did. Talk about the things that we need to improve, but once we watch the film, it's on to Louisiana Tech. And our goal this year is to prepare every week the same for every every opponent. Well, listen, whatever you've done so far for the first three weeks, I would suggest keep doing it because it is working. And this college football talk is brought to you by Goodyear. When you put in the hours, the reps, and the heart, nothing can keep you from being blimp-worthy, Goodyear more driven, and you guys, Coach O, have certainly been uh, blimp-worthy so far this college football season. Uh, we, we talked about the quarterback, but LSU historically has just cranked out defensive player after defensive player, especially in the defensive backfield. And uh, we said this before the season started. I don't know if there's a better nickname for a corner than Greedy Williams, and he has played up to that nickname, Coach. What makes him so special? Yes, he has great instinct. He's tall. He's long. I learned that from Pete Carroll. You want tall, long corners with speed. He is a great young man. I thought he played a tremendous game against Auburn. He's a force for us. So is Devin White. Uh, I think we have one of the best linebackers, if not the best linebacker in the country. Uh, those guys are playing fantastic for us. Coach, as far as this team now, the success uh, hasn't made a ton of success uh, in the past two years, but you're sitting here at 3-0. and You're sitting here at number 6 in the country. You are dealing with 18- to 22-year-olds. So yeah. do you feel right. you have to kind of – Mute it a little bit or make sure they're not too high on the pedestal? How, how will you go about that? Sure, no question. We have to stay humble. We're going to show them some things on the film that we need to fix to get better. We're going to play better opponents down the road really quick. They know that. Uh, we have a very tough schedule playing the SEC West, but that's why you come to LSU. We have to improve every day throughout the season. What, what's, the, what's the feeling like on campus? What, what sort of a feedback are you getting from fans after this great start? 
Well, I'm sure it's good. We haven't been. We've been in the office <laughs> watching the Louisiana Tech, so I've not been on campus. I'm sure it's high. Uh, we have a tremendous fan base here at LSU. They expect the best, and we want to give them the best. That's yeah, a stunner. Coaches in their office. We're breaking down film. Yeah, yeah. we're talking to Ed Orgeron, head coach at LSU. Monster win. First, first a big win in opening weekend. As I said, Auburn played Washington. You guys played Miami. Uh, big wins early on, and then this matchup undefeated. And the winner was certainly going to be high ranked, which you are. I, I'm curious, going back to the when Cole Tracy goes out to uh, to to kick the uh, the winning field goal, are you the type of coach? Do you say something to him before that? Do you let him go? How, how do you deal with that? <laughs> no, let him go. Go get him, boy. <laughs> Just go. I had faith in him. I really, really did. I thought he was going to make the field goal the whole time. So did our team. We have tremendous uh, confidence in Coach Greg McMahon, our special teams coordinator, and all the things that he does. And Cole's just been fantastic everything ever since he stepped on on campus. Uh, Ed Orgeron with us, LSU head coach, off to a great start again. The first time in 37 years a team has two top 10 wins in the first three weeks of the season. The players are clearly having fun, Coach. Uh, the fans are having fun. And this is not a word associated with coaches a lot, but it sure seems like you guys are having a lot of fun in this start. We are. I have a tremendous staff. Coaching at LSU is fun. I like to have fun. It's the same way we did at USC with Pete Carroll. We started starting to get that sort of temperament around the office. Uh, guys are playing with energy. Guys enjoy coming to work, enjoy being with each other, but we have a long way to go. Well, Coach, I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but but in, in on the outside looking in and talking to players, even from other teams that you were on, and knowing how much players love playing for you, Really, really happy for you and the success you've had right now. And uh, I, I love the way you coach. I would have loved to have played for you at some point in my career. And um, those guys are very fortunate to have you as a head coach. And best of luck with continued success there. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And uh, go Tigers. You right. got it. Thanks, Thanks coach. coach. I love that he ends every single go interview Tigers. With every go single Tigers. One. It but is just fantastic. Look, and you see, look, football coaches are lifers. It's in your yeah. blood. Like you know, there's no way around it. They can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. You know, I tell the story. Eric Mangini got the click. It's like it was the finger that was missing yep. from my hand. I don't know if I see anybody enjoying it more than at Oregon. And, and players right? love to, you know, he's that guy. And, and listen, you go through a lot of, in a, in a career, different coaches and have different attitudes and stuff in there. And, and I'm not saying a coach has to make you play better. Right. But man, when you, when you're in it with a coach, when you, when you just look at that coach and you want to play for that coach and you just, you're buying in to what that coach has to say. It's fun, it man. It just makes it so much more special. And then you went over the top of that. Yeah. It just, wow. It's just incredible. So, as he said, they're preparing for Louisiana Tech, and there's no, no, there's no reason for us to sit there and say, hey, you know, you got three weeks, you got Georgia coming up, because all he's going to say is, we have Louisiana Tech. Correct. So it's a waste of time to ask him anything like that, because that's what his focus is on, and that's what his focus should be on, and his players, just for that reason, you don't want any players start to get heady a little bit because they are 18 to 22 year olds right. that do read what's written about them and do see where the rankings are. And you all of a sudden take your foot off the gas just a little bit. And it's just good enough then to get you beat right. occasionally. And that's something that, they, you know, that they don't want to mess up right now. Again, Louisiana Tech, Ole Miss, Florida, Florida. in the next three weeks. Then after that, number two, Georgia, number 14, Mississippi State. By week number one, Alabama. That's the whole so, thing. That's the whole kit and caboodle right are there. Going and and after what you saw Alabama do, good lord! I mean, it is ridiculous. It, it makes you just wonder. Is everybody just playing for second place? But yeah. you line up and you play every week. And I guarantee you, Ed Orgeron, by the time they get to that weekend, they're going to prepare like hell, like they always do. So we'll see. But boy, Alabama looks good. It is look, and, and the thing that makes it more susceptible in college football than the NFL is these are kids, right? I, there, there's a there's a sense of guys that have been in the league in the NFL that have been there five, six, seven, eight, nine years that they're more prepared to deal with the ups and downs. So uh, the possibility of something going haywire for a team that has been so dominant to the start of the season in Alabama is there simply because of the age group we're dealing with. But to your point, Mike, I think from a coach's perspective – 
the next three weeks are going to be the most critical part for Ed Orgeron and his staff. Yeah, yeah. The kids will be ready for those games against Georgia, against Mississippi State and Alabama. You need to make sure you stay in their heads for these next three weeks. This is where this coaching staff will really prove its mettle at LSU. You know, and the top teams are doing the top things. Georgia's doing what they're supposed to. Clemson is as well with that NFL D-line. They have Ohio State. Was a, a close game for a bit with TCU, and then they just they, they just pulled away. Kind of rolled on them there, and they have Penn State coming up in a couple of weeks. Oklahoma doing their things. We see LSU just got uh, moved up to number six. Stanford, Notre Dame, they've had a couple of, uh, of shaky wins their last two weeks, but that's when you just say, okay, we got the win, and you move yeah. on and you try and play play better. Hadn't been the prettiest thing in the world, but you sit there three and zero. That's what you're looking for. Right now, Ohio State's going to be interesting after that big win. As I said, now they get Urban Meyer back. You know, again, they've had him at practice. They just right. haven't had him on the sideline. Now they get him back on the sideline, you know, as they get ready to, you know, you start to get into the, the meat of the schedule a little bit. And again, I think we said it last week. I think we, we feel pretty good about the idea of maybe Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, uh, and, and Clemson being there. Um, you know, Ohio State's trending like that. Ohio the State, fourth, right? Uh, Ohio State, uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, they struggle a little bit. <clears throat> they did struggle yeah. a little bit. And, and again, any of the other a- 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 SEC team, it's all going to take care of itself with LSU. Right. LSU plays Georgia and Alabama. Exactly. So th- that's all going to happen on, all laid on out the field. For them. Yeah. Again, Gold Can Wingo presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests like Ed Orgeron, Happy Ed, joins us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Uh, coming up, the questionable call that cost a team a home win plus the second start for someone that was anointed after week one, did not go according to plan. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Hope your Monday's off to a good start. Glad you're with us. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. And a reminder that Golik and Wingo is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Upgrade to shaving with a fresh blade whenever you want for a fraction of the price. Join dollarshaveclub.com today. Well, Mike, uh, I think the Jets found out it's a week-to-week season. Yeah, well. Uh, everything, everything went right Monday night on the road. It's Sam Darnold's debut after the horrendous pick six to start. He turned it around. The defense turned it around. So Jets fans were feeling that optimism heading into week two. Home opener against the Dolphins, which have played the longest game ever in the history of the NFL in terms of how long from start to finish actual time it took. And then depression set in as Miami comes up on the road and wins 20 to 12 against the Jets. So what did we make a of Sam Darnold phase 2 and maybe more specifically that Jets defense phase 2? Well, I mean, listen, what we made of it is is he's a, a rookie quarterback to to think he wasn't going to make some mistakes. He threw for over 300 yards. Now Correct. he had to. It's a Miami team that was up 20 to nothing at halftime. So basically what happens is your game plan's out of the window, out the window. When you have a rookie quarterback who has to throw the ball 41 times, you're not doing what you want to do. And that's going to happen with the rookie quarterback. 25 of 41, threw for 332, had a touchdown, but had two interceptions. You're going to, let's not forget, this was a guy that had 22 turnovers between interceptions and fumbles. 
his last year at USC. He's going yep. to turn the ball over. And I just say that because that was the number associated with him. All the rookie quarterbacks who play this year are going to turn the ball over. That's part of the learning process. So while the Jets look good, and, and I th- probably think it even surprised some Jet fans, you have to take it all with a grain a grain of salt. Do they have a heavy hitter, you know, as far as a receiver is concerned? Uh I I do do we think Anunwa's been do, been good, but you're right. Been good. The lid lifters. What Are you're we asking. saying is is this that guy? Is this this monster? He did have seven catches for 92 yards. He he's the guy they're going to. There's no doubt about that. Defensively, what do they call New Jack City? They're yep. calling the DBs after the Sons of Anarchy and that D line, which there's only one left in Leonard Williams. I I, I think it was an exciting week one, and I get it, but I I, I think this week let. Jet fans know and Sam Darnold fan, fans know. Let's ease into just. Yeah. I've said this before about others, and I get yelled at for it. Let's <laughs> no. let's ease into this thing a little bit, yeah. and let's give it a little time. Especially Sam Darnold. Let's let's not throw ridiculous expectations on the guy. I agree. I, honestly, watching that game, my opinion of Darnold week one to week two really hasn't changed. I listen. Uh, my I, opinion has not changed on I, him at all. I like the guy. It's just yeah. after last week, everybody had the bronze statue already made yeah, up. To, so I mean, to, that's, yeah, to just, me, to me, the Monday night game was more about the defense and the complete yes. team than it was Darnold. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, he was a very complimentary person in week yes. one. But I, you know, I when you see, like you said, they had no running game yesterday. Nineteen carries, forty-two yards average, right. just over two yards a mm-hmm. carry. So basically, you're basically telling your rookie running back or rookie quarterback. Nothing. We've got nothing except you. So go make plays for us. I thought he actually played pretty well. Uh, my, my opinion of Darnold has not changed in any way, shape, or form from week one to week two. Uh, you know, I was a little concerned that the Jets defensively mm-hmm. weren't able to shut down Miami the way they were able to sort of get a chokehold on Detroit on the road. Yeah. And listen, it's not like Miami had, was this offensive juggernaut. No. I mean, Tannehill throws for 168. They did rush. 31 times for 135, average 4-4, so they were controlling, you know, the ball and some of the drives here and just jumped out early on the Jets. The biggest thing there is, offensively, you took the Jets out of their game plan. Correct. Offensively, you made a rookie throw it over 40 times. I don't know how many times we've seen that in the history of the NFL, but I'm just going to guess that if a rookie has thrown over 40 times in a game, well. the game probably didn't go well. Yeah. And, and then on the other side of this, you, you've got to give Adam Gase and the Dolphins a lot of credit here. Because, as we said, there was that weird game week one against Tennessee. It took forever with all the lightning uh, and storm delays in Miami. Then you knew you were going to get hyped for the Jets after what they were able to do. It's their home opener. And Tannehill didn't light the world on fire, but he managed the game very well. And I was really impressed, not only with Tannehill, but sort of the way they distributed the ball. And something that we don't talk about enough, Frank Gore. Moving yeah, to fourth, fourth place, place all time. And we we talked about this a little bit. I, I do not buy the compiler argument in football. Not to last that long in the league. Yeah. yeah. If if you're around for 14 yeah. years to rush for 14,000 yards, yeah. that's enough. I agree. That's, that's, I mean, to me, Frank, Frank Gore's going in the Hall of Fame. I don't, I, to me, there's not a discussion about it. I, I, it's tough to compile at that position. Yes. Over that amount of years. Ask Shady McCoy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who's dealing with what he's dealing now. So I, if you're a Dolphin fan, look, you're 2 and 0. Oh. You're two and zero. Oh. Exactly right. You're leading the division right now. You are what your record says you are, as Bill Parcells so famously said all those years ago. And right now, you've played two games, and you are in your division, in front, having taken two wins. That that's the best you can say. And the thing that I loved about the game plan, you know, Tannehill's had that knee injury for really two right. years now. They're they're not afraid to cut him loose. There were a couple of design runs late in that game where they were trying to seal the thing off, and they let him go. He looked like he was okay. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He'll get some really, really a, a good test count. Now they're, they're home to Oakland, and Oakland, you know, hasn't been, you know, they're yeah. certainly struggling. And then you're at New England, at Cincinnati. We'll see a lot there. So you, you definitely get a good test with those two games, no doubt about it. And then, of course, we have a short week now for the rookie quarterback and Sam Darnold mm-hmm. as they go to Cleveland. And you, I'm really curious. Dilly dilly. I'm really curious to see a lot of the emotions that might be on the line in that game in Cleveland because, quite frankly, they could very easily be 2 and 0. The Cleveland Browns could be very easily 2 and 0. Uh, and somehow they're 0 1 and 1 in the most spectacularly awful way you could be 0 1 and 1. And you've got to be thinking, we got a rookie quarterback coming in. We got a big defensive line. 
let's just try and take this one right away. And Adam brought it up. We hadn't brought it up until Adam was here. Yeah. I wouldn't think about tra- changing into Baker Mayfield no, yet at this point. So. Tyrod Taylor played much. Tyrod Taylor, sorry, played much better the second week than he did the first week. And I'll be honest with you, that defense, that defense was in New Orleans, yeah. in New Orleans, and held New Orleans to twenty-one points. Yeah, I know they lost, but you saw what New Orleans did to Tampa Bay the week before Absolutely. in New Orleans. They that defense is for real in Cleveland, and it, and it is funny, Mike, because a lot of this is the penalties, and we'll get into one uh, coming up. But you know, uh, we've seen dominant defensive performances. All right, we saw what the Vikings have done the first couple of weeks. We've seen what Jacksonville has done the first couple of weeks. We've seen the Cleveland defense be very good. We've seen uh, Dallas's defense actually play really well for the first two weeks of the season. So even everything is skewed toward offense. Defenses are making their presence felt in these games. Uh, and yeah. coming up, unfortunately, for one player and one team, uh, he made his presence felt in a way that the league didn't think was right, even though I don't know what he could have done. Plus, a head coach said something that really made you think, did he really just say that in light of decisions made before the start of the season? Guys, let's be real. When you look good, you feel good. At the JCPenney wardrobe sale, you can get 50% off select men's suits, separate sport coats, dress pants, and accessories. Plus, select dress shirts, buy one, get one free. Raise your game with Collection by Michael Strahan. All the right looks to take your style to the next level. Also, save an extra 20% off with your JCPenney credit card and coupon or extra 15% off with any other method of payment. Hurry in. JCPenney, style and value for all. Pricing and coupon valid 913 and 923. Credit offer subject to credit approval. Some exclusions and restrictions apply. See store jcp.com for coupon and details. Golden Wingo here on a Monday morning, and we've, we've been doing a deep dive into a lot of the football games, and we got a big one coming up tonight we'll talk about. Looking forward to that as Seattle goes to Chicago. We'll hear from Jason Witten uh, next hour. But, Mike, something happened at the end of a game yesterday that y- you just can't let slide. First of all, congratulations to Case Keenum, who, by the way, came with a lot of scrutiny uh, going over from Minnesota to the Denver Broncos. Well, in his first two games, both in Denver – He's led fourth quarter, come from behind, game winning drives. So that's a good thing, right? If you're going to play well, play well late. Um, but at the end of that game, sort of the same thing happened in week two for John Gruden's Raiders that happened in week one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were outscored 23 to nothing after the half by the Rams week one in the Monday night football game. And they had the lead at the half and were outscored once again in the second half of that game. And on that last drive, where the Broncos essentially kicked it with like, with like six seconds right. left, they were having a hard time getting their legs mm-hmm. and their lungs underneath them. Uh, there were times when the pass rushers were literally lying down yeah. on the field. Getting back up just in time for the snap. Just yeah. in time off for the snap. And, of course, uh, they got Deshaun Hamilton with a huge route to get Brandon McManus in range to kick a game-winning field goal. And after the game, this is what Raiders head coach John Gruden had to say. we got to do something. we got to do something. we got to... We got to get there. We got to win in some one on ones and maybe call up some more blitzes. We got to figure something out. We will. Okay. Basically saying we didn't get enough pressure on didn't the quarterback. Did we hear that in week one as well? We did. Now, again, hindsight is 2020, but I, I just, I had to think as I'm watching the end of this game, as you see those Raiders gassed on the field, you think maybe, just maybe a closer like Khalil Mack might have helped you in that situation? Listen, we're never going to understand the trade of that. No. Not, not for what that guy turned into, and if you're not paying him, who are you paying? To the fact that they don't get pressure on the quarterback. If you look at the sack number, they're second tied for second and last in the league. They have two. Yeah. So they're averaging one sack a week. The worst is the Giants in two games have just one sack in right. two games. I don't count Seattle. Seattle has one sack, but they haven't played their second game yet. Correct. They play it tonight in Chicago. So the Giants have one sack, and then three teams, the Rams, which is somewhat stunning, Oakland and Kansas City all have two sacks. Yeah. Which is, uh, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer for that. I don't have an answer of why they didn't sign him, why Khalil Mack isn't on the Raiders. But then when you now, two weeks out of two weeks, you say we need more pass rush, everyone just. You had it. It was there. There he is. He's wearing a Chicago Bear uniform right now. Yeah. And And you guys let it happen. You you just let him walk out the door. You can say he didn't want to be here. No, he was just holding out for a better deal. I don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that. Aaron Donald wasn't there at all, wouldn't show up anywhere, and still still got a deal. Exactly right. Uh, So I don't want to hear that. It's just you you have created a problem. Yeah. And now you've got to try and fix your problem. And oh, by the way... (laughs) We said this, Mike. They better get off to a good start. We said that. And they didn't. And they didn't. No. And now they got to go to Miami. Mm-hmm. So now they're in Denver. They're going to go home. They're going to go cross country and go to Miami. 
for a Dolphins team that is fired up, I'm telling you it's going to get late early for the yeah, Raiders if they don't find a way to win a game. And, and it was just it was just stark to hear John say, we got to find a way to get a pass rush when you had arguably one of the top three pass yes, rushers in the league and you let him go. <laughs> you let him go in his prime. So that's one situation. The other situation is what happened in Green Bay where – we thought we had a play made that sealed the win in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers limping back to Lambeau after the, after the knee strain in week one was going to come back and lead them to a 2-0 start in their division, a critical win at home against a strong division opponent. And then it ended up being a tie because on a, what would have been a game clinching interception in the fourth quarter, Clay Matthews was flagged for your least favorite hit. I just, it just blows my mind. It blows my mind. He got called for landing, putting his weight on the quarterback. Um, Eric um, Kendricks yes. got called for the Minnesota Vikings earlier in that end of game. The first half. End of the first half. And actually, I that one, he didn't put his hands out as he landed on him, and that's what I kind of look for. So I kind of see that call, even though I don't, I don't, quite honestly, I don't like any of them, to be honest with you. But that's the rule, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to say, okay, this is the rule, let's try and live by the rule. Kendricks didn't really put a hand out, kind of land and landed in the gut of Aaron Rodgers. But on this one with Clay Matthews, this is a conversation with our Rob Domofsky and Tony Carrenti, the official yes. in that game. Uh, Rob said, can you explain the penalty on Clay Matthews? Carrenti says, that was a play in the fourth quarter. Rob says, yes, sir. <laughs> he said when he, uh, Carrenti said when he hit the quarterback, he lifted him and drove him into the ground. Rob said, is that enforced under the new helmet rule? No, not at all. It has nothing to do with the rule of full body weight. It has nothing to do with the helmet to helmet. He picked the quarterback up and drove him into the ground. Rob then asked Tony, what could he have done differently on that play? Tony Carrente, not picked him up and drove him into the ground. And I call bull, Tony. I yeah. call bull on that play. You watch that play. What was, what was the quarterback doing when he got hit? Throwing the ball. Correct. What happens when you throw the ball? You, you start to forward. move forward and, and Clay went down low in the gut with the shoulder. So as he's hitting him, Cousins is throwing the ball and going forward. He went over the shoulder of Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews just kept running, and that lifted, that lifted Kirk Cousins. Correct. And then when he went into the ground, he put a hand out to brace it. So I, I'm fed up. I'm not going to lie. I'm fed up with the league and these calls. I think they're ridiculous, and this cost a team. That game was sealed with that interception. NFL, you are costing, costing teams with these. And I couldn't disagree with that interpretation more. And quite honestly, Joe Thomas, who joins us every week, would walk into the Hall of Fame, old lineman from Cleveland, said, maybe we need to start reviewing those. And I tell you what, I'm not a fan of adding more reviews. But for this, I would almost say review it. Absolutely. Because they're becoming that important. And you can't, if you reviewed that play and you still called it, then I completely throw my hands in the air and say, I don't know what to tell a defender any more on what to do in that split second of tackling a quarterback. By the definition of the rules they have in place, he didn't hit him high, he didn't hit him low, he hit him in the midsection, and as you said, Kirk Cousins was coming forward, and if you see the replay, you clearly see him take his left, left arm hand and out, put it out. And tr- basically, all he, the other thing he could have done is come with a pillow and a blanket. They're listening. A pillow they're, and a blanket. They're listening, League, and not doing the things they did, and they're still getting flagged. It's, it's wrong. It's frustrating. All right, coming up, who won the weekend? Not Clay Matthews or the ref. We'll ask our next guest, though. Stay with us. Guys, let's be real. When you look good, you feel good. At the JCPenney wardrobe sale, you can get 50% off select men's suits, separate sport coats, dress pants, and accessories. Plus, select dress shirts, buy one, get one free. Raise your game with Collection by Michael Strahan. All the right looks to take your style to the next level. Also, save an extra 20% off with your JCPenney credit card and coupon or extra 15% off with any other method of payment. Hurry in. JCPenney, style and value for all. Pricing and coupon valid 913 and 923. Credit offer subject to credit approvals. Some exclusions and restrictions apply. See store jcp.com for coupon and details. You know what's driving me nuts? That I'm the better looking one? <laughs> no. Waiting to check out at the grocery store. When I'm hungry, my instincts kick in and I just want to smash through the line. Well, you should make things safer for all of us and try almonds. They have four grams of hunger slaying fiber, which can be game changing, even for a man of your stature. Eh, not a bad idea. But what if I'm in line waiting to buy almonds? Stick to the self checkout and remember to breathe. California almonds. Own your every day. Every day. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. 
We are delighted to be joined by the guy I'll be working with a little later on today as well on NFL Primetime. NFL analyst Jeff Saturday joins us in studio, giving us the straight talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Let, let's start right here because I was <laughs> deciding during the break, I was swore that you were teammates with, with Vontae Davis in Indianapolis. Oh, no, here- Here's how the conversation yeah. went. There it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I deserve that. You're, you're just happy that because of what I want to say. Correct. So, Trey says to Jeff, you were teammates with Vontae Davis, and, and Jeff said no. And, and Trey was like, are you sure? <laughs> right. I'm like, Trey, it's his career. He knows when he played somewhere and who his teammates were. You were questioning him on whether he was a teammate yes. with Vontae Davis, and it turns out he was not a yeah. teammate of Vontae Davis. But I love the fact that you were pointing this out when you didn't know you sacked Brett Favre. Right. I didn't sack him on that play. I was in that. Again. You didn't know you sacked Brett he Favre. He was not Brett Favre okay, then. How about he this? was Brett Favre. How about this? You, <laughs> how about this? 1992. How, how about this? You forgot you played high school baseball for a year. I don't know. We have to go cut the tape. I don't think I said I didn't play. <laughs> oh, you, oh no, no, stands it. Get I that. Yeah, you keep receipts it. on this show. You said it. Yeah, Fine. You you're going to need to find that because I don't. I don't believe I said that. Get out of here. I don't believe I said that. Go. Let's go. Who are you? We have one mission. Retraction. That's a big Mike retraction. Right there, uh, Mike. Uh, we have we have one. We have one thing to you do. You find for that on tape. I don't believe I said find that. Find that tape. <laughs> no. Let's go. Damn. I have backup on that. All right. So. The reason I ask, because obviously one of the strangest things Mike and I have ever, ever seen. Have you ever heard on any level of a guy at halftime saying, look, I started the game, but now I've decided to retire? Never, never. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. And, and it, it, I mean, here's my thing. I read, it, I, I think I read his statement or something yeah. or something he put out later on and just talking about his body and those kind of things. When you walk away, you're putting someone else in jeopardy because somebody else has to take those reps feel that whether he's a special teams guy, when you go in with a game plan, you know the numbers are so tight. Everybody has a role. So I respect that you don't want to play anymore. Halftime's not the time to make that decision, man. Let's hold yeah. on another half hour or so. Give me 30 more minutes of good work. I don't care if you give up, but at least be a body, be a presence where somebody can come help. Because at the end of the day, you're putting it on someone else. You're, you're risk putting someone else at risk because you decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get dressed and take it to the house. I mean, absolutely. One of the craziest things in sport that I have ever heard of was walking out at, I mean, retiring at halftime. I, I was really trying, Jeff, at first to, to say, okay, let, let me try as hard as I can to look at it from his side. Cause this isn't like a one year guy. It's right. a 10 year guy. Absolutely. Let me look at it from his side and see if there's any way I can understand. You know, not saying I don't want to play, but, but in this game, but literally leaving your team at halftime, leaving the stadium. And I racked my brain and I, and I just can't do it. I mean, for every person, just about every player out there, people always say, what do you miss about the game? And I, and I, I think almost to a man, the, the first thing everybody says is I miss the locker room. Absolutely. I miss the guys. I miss, because everybody still wants to go play on game day. I'd still right. want to play in game day. I'm sure you would too. We don't want to do what's necessary from February to, to September <laughs> to get there. You are speaking true. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's what, that's what you don't want to do anymore. But man, you miss the guys. You miss Absolutely. who you're playing for. You know, that guy next to you and to just, so I couldn't, could you think of any? I mean, I was really racking my brain no. trying to say, okay, this is a 10 year vet. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. And it just keeps coming back to quit. Walked out on teammates right. and, and I can't get past that. And what that. you said is the, the most important thing is, who you're playing for, right? I mean, I, I think people sometimes forget. I mean, fans, I know they forget. The, we love the fans, world, but you play for the guy beside That's you. Right. You play for the, the the family that you're building in that locker room, and I use that term loosely. I'm not saying you're, but but you know what I'm talking about. It's it's the group of 53 or so every you know for, from training camp. Summer, you name it, all the travel, all the time you put in together, there is, there is a sense of camaraderie that's like none other. And when you're putting it on the line each and every week together, something forges and is built in that. It's who you're playing for. That's the most disappointing part is you've now left. If you're injured, I get it. And you're right. like, Hey, I'm going to dress. I'm going to head home. Some guys walk back on the sideline, but if it is, you don't clean scratch yourself, man. No. I mean, you know what I mean? It's not a healthy scratch deal. Yeah. You're in the game. You He you, started the game. You started it, right? And you you know that you're getting the lion's share of all of this and you just decide, "Hey man, I I can't I can't justify it." I, I get that, "Hey, my body's not what it once was. I felt the same way when I retired. No. I didn't like what I saw on film." Everybody goes through that. And to a man, you got to decide if he'd have come back today and said, "Hey, I'm right. retiring." 
I'm all for it. I support the heck out of that decision. Yep. I got no issue with that. Not at halftime. Not yeah. at halftime. Not leaving not, my guys. No, no, no way. What yeah. did we say after the week one win when Aaron Rodgers did what he had to do to get back out there and he said, this is what we ask ourselves in this game. What are you willing to do for your teammates? That's right. And you ask the same question here. What are you willing to do for your teammates? <laughs> right, right. Apparently not very much. Take it to the house. Okay, Jeff Saturday with us. You have had in your career the luxury of having not only great quarterbacks that you've Carried. Uh, had hands on yeah, your butt. Carried. Uh, right. and Aaron Rodgers, then along for <laughs> that Peyton Manning. You also had Adam Vinatieri for a long stretch of your career, so you didn't have to deal with this a lot. However, there were times when a former kicker drove you crazy. Yes. Mike Vanderjack. Yes. Um, take us through what it's like as an offensive lineman oh. when you are putting it together to one of these game-winning situations and you go down there and you think, we're all set up. All we need to do is have this guy put it through the uprights, and we are good. We as a team are walking out with a win. And to see that pill sail in all the wrong directions. You got one job. <laughs> you got one job, man. It, it is unbelievable. Yesterday, I'm watching this. We watch it in a big room, you know, and everybody's watching. I literally wanted to take kicking out of the game <laughs> altogether. Just scratch it. No more field goals. No more PATs. I was so mad because of that exact point. You work as a group. You have 11 guys working in concert to move this thing down. You're putting it all together, and all of a sudden you put it all in, and it is a shank, a push, a yank, whatever it is, and it could not be more frustrating. Now, I say that in jest because we know that's a big part of the game, but it absolutely destroys you, man. I mean, it is... It is one of the most disheartening things, and and I'm telling you, as an offensive lineman, and every offensive lineman will tell you this, you you can hear it. When that ball gets kicked, there are times when you're like, no, no, that, that didn't even sound. And then you have a guy like, 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 um, um, Vinatieri who comes up and it sounds like a cannon. It's right like, out. boom, that's good. Right. I mean, you, you, you just go. You're no shocked one, when it isn't perfect. Exactly. With exactly. And so I can't imagine. And you, you know, your heart breaks for Gonzalez. I mean, your, your heart breaks for these guys because. They, they understand it's one job. This is all, this is all I practice. Is it, hey, just for people who don't know, they don't do anything else during nope. practice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like when we start practice, if they have a drill they got to do, whether you're a punter, a kicker, a snapper, it's very limited how much time they spend on the field with us. Then they get to go off. And go work out, you know, go do their own thing, kick it, whatever. We're all really good golfers. Yeah, man. I mean, all of a sudden, they get a ton of time to get this thing right. And and for whatever reason, yesterday was a horrendous day for kickers and a worse day for me having to watch that happen because it destroyed me. First, by how bad it was. Amazingly enough, Jeff, it was not the worst day. Yeah. There were what? three yeah. other occasions yep. in 2015, then once in 2016, and once in 2017 where yesterday there were 19 missed kicks, field goals and extra points. In all those three other occurrences, there was 21. That stunned me. I thought it was going to be the most oh, for yeah, sure. I would have bet and listen, on that too. Are we being hypocritical because when a kicker makes it, we love him? Yes, sure, we are. Sure, But that's just the way it is. I'm for, full for, on hypocrite. For, for every other <laughs> player out there, yeah. when, when it's that's the one thing you're, yes. you're supposed to do and you don't yeah. do it, well, especially <laughs> when you don't do it multiple well, times and, in and a game. And when we're down by two, I love you. Yeah. When we're, yeah. uh, yes, I'm a hypocrite 100 yes, i'll yes, admit it are. but i'm still going to throw stones yep. i'm not afraid to do it yep. we're with you winter tie basically <laughs> yes. is what we're by the way <laughs> making it worse for kickers is what the rams did yesterday greg zerline hurt his leg johnny hecker the punter went out and made an extra point and then they just said screw it we're going for two yeah we're just gonna time. go for two all and the time 30. 30 no problem 34 to nothing unbelievable all right jeff saturday here with us so that's one thing i have to ask you about I also have to ask you about this. The Broncos found a way to come back and win. Case Keenum, two games, two fourth quarter, come from behind, game winning drives. Good for him. Yeah. But after the game, after the game, Raiders head coach John Gruden said, we got to find a way to get more pressure. And we, we uh, Mike two and I were like, he said that two weeks in a row. Yeah. Two weeks, in a, yeah. two weeks have, in a row. They have two sacks in two games. Didn't, yeah. didn't they have more pressure and they decided that they didn't want the more pressure? <laughs> you had a, a hundred million dollar guy sitting uh, right there who worked his tail off, did everything you asked him to do. Nah, he, he don't want to play here. So we're going to go re, uh, now we're going to go ask our defensive coordinator because here's the deal. If you can't create pressure with four guys, three guys, what do you got to do? You got to start bringing, guess what that does? Mm-hmm. That means you're short on the back end. So when you do have high pressure moments and you have a quarterback back there and it's a game winning and you got to go get pressure and you got to bring five or six, 
Guess what that does to the back end? Makes you weaker on the back end. Yeah. So however you want to look at it, Gruden is, I mean, he's basically stepped on himself two weeks in a row. We need more pressure. We're going to have to do something to find more pressure. You had him. He's now in Chicago. Yeah. And by the way, he'll go get that pressure. He continues to get pressure, whether he's bull rushing, ripping around the edge. If you bring him in, I mean, whatever you need him to do, the guy has done it and proves a time and time again he can do it. I think he was all pro at two different positions. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago. And both yeah. of those positions get pressure. That's whether correct. you're an outside linebacker or defensive end, yeah. both kind of the same thing. I'm going to go get it happen. I'm going to Make it happen. I mean, you do it to yourself. Yeah. Literally, this is you've done this, yeah, damage. you have done this to yourself. Jeff Saturday joining us, Super Bowl champ, six time Pro Bowler, now high school coach. Big game this weekend. I know big game, have. big yeah. game. We beat this team by one point on the last, last second field goal. Your kicker made field. it. He made it. Yeah. That's what you love, a baby celebration yeah. time. Uh-huh. So, going to be a big weekend, yeah. man. Looking forward Revenge to it. Revenge on the minds of your opponents. There's, no doubt. There's so, no doubt. So, so in the game now, these first two weeks of the season, we were also talking about how good the football has been. Yeah. You know, it really has been good. And a lot of it was said, well, we're getting some really good quarterback play, which kind of in turn goes hand in hand with the rules they have for protecting the quarterback, which they've even emphasized a little bit more, which led to one of the plays or really, I think two plays yet or more than two, but in the same game, the Clay Matthews hit. Yes. Uh, on, uh, Aaron, on, um, Kirk I'm sorry, Kirk Cousins. And the Eric Kendricks hit from Minnesota on Aaron Rodgers. Now, I, a lot of people said that hit was worse than Clay Matthews, and that was earlier in the game. And the uh, end of the first half, Green right. Bay ended up kicking a field, field goal, goal or getting got, a touchdown. They got, one they of the got, two, they, got they, field they goal. scored. My thought on that was the rule: Kendricks didn't put an arm out; he did kind of throw his shoulder in there, so I could see that one more, even though I'm not a big fan of the rule. But the Clay Matthews one, Trash. Jeff. I mean. I, I understand the protection of the quarterback, and I'm trying to go along with that, but I don't know what to tell defenders anymore on what to do to not get a flag. Hey, hey, listen, it's absolute trash. I mean, here's the worst part for me, is that you say they're putting their body weight because they grab the, the quarterback and they pull him to to their own body. Well, how do you break – if you're, you can only hit the guy from the shoulders to the knees, he's pretty strong in his core. That's why we're telling you to hit him there. He can still throw the ball. If right. you don't break his body and make him bend the ball, Aaron Rodgers has shown you how strong his arm is, right? I mean, if you're looking at Kirk Cousins, these aren't small. Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, ben, if you don't bend a guy up and at least get his core to bend over, he can still get rid of the football. So Clay Matthews was a hundred percent trash. I mean, you he couldn't have done it right. Any other way. He bends, he puts his hand puts down. Puts his arm up. That's he a does thing to everything. me. That, that, that's the thing I think I, I want to emphasize here as I'm yelling at the league. Just watch the replay. League, yeah. I actually think the players are hearing you. I agree. How many times, Trey, you mentioned it yeah. before. How many times we have seen now safeties squaring up yes. instead of diving at, at, at an opponent to get that penalty. We're seeing the, these D linemen actually and linebackers putting their hands out and bracing. They're listening and you're still, still. flagging them. 100%. That's the frustration. Frustrating part. League, it's working, but you're going too far with it. Absolutely. Well, you're not letting the game be played out as it should be. Mike Daniels actually pulled up early in the, early right. in the game. Right. He That's had right. Cousins thought he threw the ball away. So instead of bringing, he stopped Stop. to turn to run because we got, we have guys so, it's so ingrained in them. Don't do something stupid. I mean, at that point with Clay Matthews, that is a game changing play. Literally. Literally. There was an interception Literally. that was taken away by that one. It is a game changing play, right? And you let that thing stand. That's where I think the refs got to come together and say, hey, what did you see? What was the real Let's issue? review it. Do you review agree with that? Joe thing? Thomas tweeted that out. And, and I'm not into adding reviews for things. But they're becoming so crucial yeah. that I think it might be time yeah, to review it. It's a turn. I mean, it's, it's a turn. It's a play of magnitude in the game. I think you have to do it. If it's going to be that close, if you're going to call it that tight, you have to give some benefit to the defensive player. Again, I think the whole thing where they bring guys in, oh, that's driving. That's not driving at. I can tell you, it will take, you show me every one of those plays and I can show you, nope, he intentionally did that. Oh, no, he didn't. I agree. Cause you yeah. can completely tell when a guy's trying to drive that Let me tell you down. what. You can see it. Go man. watch old tape of my buddy Clyde Simmons, now the yes, D-line sir. coach in Cleveland, when it was legal. This dude tucked him in, sucked him in, and dropped Drove right on him. Yeah. But you were allowed to. It was perfectly legal. That is that is laying with all your body weight. Yes. These guys now, as soon as I see a guy put a hand out or two hands out, t- to me, you shouldn't even be throwing the flag. 100% that agree. tells me they're thinking about right. it and they're trying not to land their entire body weight And on what it. did the NFL say after week one? Yeah, the Miles Garrett penalty, which led to a touchdown, right. by the That's way, right. for them exactly in a right. game that Cleveland could have won without right. that one. Right. Uh, we got that one wrong. I think they have to come out and say we got that one wrong with Clay Matthews. No doubt. There's 
they no have doubt. to come out and but say again, they got it But it doesn't wrong. change that you've tied right. or lost or whatever it is. That's the problem for you me. Hate when that you, letter. Yeah. Get when on you Monday. come back, man, hey man, don't even send the letter, right? Yeah. Just, just, just fix it for the next time because all you're going to do is piss me off, right? Yeah. Like, yep. Because we've done everything we can do, and you're still allowing this to change games. And and I am the first. I'm the largest advocate for player safety. But we have gone. We have made it impossible for defensive players, especially D linemen, in this in this deal. I mean, my goodness, man! You make a great play. You beat a guy clean, and you go to hit him. It's like you got a target of where to hit him, and then how much body pressure you can put yeah. on him. It's too much. It's uh, it's it's too much. Listen, all Clay could do was bring a blanket and a pillow, uh, for right? Him to, to, for him to land down. on. I mean, look, set him down. Uh, I, absolutely, they have to admit that that one should not have been called. Okay, as Jeff Saturday is with us, offensive lineman all those years, Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ. I have to ask you the Sunday night game, uh, two games in uh, to the Giants' reworked offensive line. It ain't working. Yeah, it, but but listen, this was a this was a a disaster, and and but it's for a, mo- a multitude of reasons, right? I mean, you had bringing slot pressure, and you're asking a back to pick them up. Back doesn't do a good job. Then they're cross blitzing and giving you some some other stuff. And then there's just some. I'm not sure Hernandez stepped down. The guy's literally right in front of him, and I I don't know what. I'm not sure if it's a protection call that they're having to sort out. It sounded to me just watching the game that Eli put him. I mean, you're hearing him using a, a Lee term, and I'm not I'm not breaking any news here. Yeah, but yeah. usually that means go left. left yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's not it's, it's R word L word. Yeah, yeah, not, not you know we're not rocket science. Right? Yes, there. We just, are cavemen. <laughs> I mean, you know. So, but you hear him saying it. So as I'm watching, I just can't get it through my head of why you wouldn't be able to pass it off. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, Collinsworth did a good job during the show of saying, hey, there was Chris some, Collinsworth, NBC Chris, booth. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, of talking about, hey, they're doing some games. That wasn't super complicated games either. I mean, that's like that's like Listen, level one, man. A lot of that was a slot like, blitz. Like, like, yeah. like Mike said earlier about games, he said, that's not schematic. Exactly. That's just bad execution. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, think, I think he gave them too much credit. Oh, it's not physical. That yeah, is it physical, is. man. Yes, it because is. the way yeah. you're setting, you're not allowing yourself to be able to punch and get off and re-release. I mean, all those things. There was nothing. Like, I didn't look at it and go, man, that was a good one. Great design by, you know, yeah. great design by the Cowboys. Because here's the deal. That they're not even known for great designs on no. defense, right? It's line up and try to beat you. Let's play. Let's play coverage behind it. It was. It was awful. And from, they lost their center, John Halapio. Yeah, they, they her lower leg right, yeah, broke his leg. It looked like they brought the air cast. The out, air cast is means, never a good never, sign. Never a, good a busted sign. leg. So he's out. The Cam Robinson. You saw the left tackle from Jacksonville torn ACL. He's yeah, out. That's so a that's bummer. a but yeah. tough for that 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 giant line, which is trying to kind of reinvent itself. But, but they got. Not going I mean, here's well. my deal, mate. People talk about about part of the game that's changing, and you hear people talk about how much time you can spend with guys. This is not a time issue, man. No. I can tell you right now. I didn't. I went out a ton by myself and went through my steps over and over and over. Whether it's a right-handed stance, left-handed stance, when I was playing guard, when I was playing center. Hey, if I got to pass a blitz off, is my butt down and my shoving? All the techniques and fundamentals do not require you doing it. I mean, it is literally, I'm going to shove a guy, there's another guy coming in my gap, I'm going to wait for him to get there. Uh, again, the amount of time, everybody's going to say, well, we don't get enough time to oil this up. That is not the case, man. You got You have to demand more from this group, and your expectations have to be raised, or you got to find new guys to do it. Because at the end of the day, that has to be picked up. Well, I think the right tackle situation for the Giants is eventually finding a new guy. Because, yeah. uh, well, they'll end yeah. up, yeah, they'll end up, uh, you know, m- moving it on. But the problem is, is when you have a guy like that, if he's your problem, it affects if you're sliding right. his way. It affects all so, of it, right? Because yeah, if sure he does. gets inside, all of a sudden the protection breaks down. But but again, what you watched last night was not you know a magnificent performance on the Cowboys. It was it was bad. It wasn't a great Giants. game. Quite no, honestly, no, no, and, and we started talking about that division where maybe the the, Gi- the Giants are. Are with that offense. I don't, I don't think they're going to be in contention. Philly, I still think is the top. Washington laid an egg offensively oh, against, against a Colts? defense that is yeah. not a great defense. No. <laughs> and the Cowboys were nothing spectacular. So that division kind of there, which, which I think makes it even though that more important. Carson Wentz probably going to be back this week. About an eight and eight, about an eight and eight division right Nine now. Yeah. Seven yeah. 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 real good. We'll make when it it's all said right and done. there. And, and again, Dak Prescott, 160 passing yards, 64 on one throw. Yeah. 96 the rest of the game. 
they still don't have a threat in the passing game. One of these yet. times we get Jeff in, we're going to have to go over calls on the O line yes. and D line. I'm all with about a, it. So much we, fun. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah the, I am all the, about the, it. The, That's when the Einstein steps yeah. in, folks. Y'all pay exactly attention to that, right. baby. By the way, in the least surprising news of all time, Adam Schefter tweeting the Browns are planning on moving on and finding a new kid. Stunner. Uh, yeah, you're shocked. It may not be the yeah. only team that does that mm-hmm. this week. By the way, Golik and Wingo on the road, presented by Progressive Insurance, will be live this Friday from Philadelphia for the Colts Eagles matchup. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of six hundred and twenty bucks. Jeff, I'll see you in a few hours for NFL Primetime, one thirty Eastern, to it, brother. on ESPN. Guys, let's be real. When you look good, you feel good. At the J.C. Penney Wardrobe Sale, you can get fifty percent off select men's suits, separate sport coats, dress pants, and accessories. Plus, select dress shirts, buy one get one free. Raise your game with Collection by Michael Strahan. All the right looks to take your style to the next level. Also, save an extra twenty percent off with your J.C. Penney credit card and coupon, or extra fifteen percent off with any other method of payment. Hurry in, J.C. Penney. Style and value for all. Pricing and coupon valid nine thirteen and nine twenty three. Credit offer subject to credit approval. Some exclusions and restrictions apply. See store jcp dot com for coupon details. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. All right, Golgan Wingo here with you, ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll get to the Monday night coming up well, with Chicago and Seattle in just a minute. But, Mike, our, our fine uh, producer, Daniel Stanzik, uh-huh. has been just doing some work and came up with a ridiculously Wait, what? shocky st- I know, for once. Uh, you know, normally he just sits back there and makes fun of us, wow. which is easy. Um, but he actually did some work today. Okay. And uh, we were very curious to find the results of his work. The New York football giants, Eli Manning. Odell Beckham Jr., all these wide receivers. Now they have Saquon Barkley. You know the last time they scored 30 points in a game? When? Week 17 of the 2015 season. Wow, really? 2015 season. So they've gone <laughs> two full seasons and two games without without getting to the 30-point plateau. That seems odd with an That's Odell an Beckham am- player. An obviously. amazing yeah. lack of production in a in a in a day and age in the league where they're basically begging you to score. Yeah. That is somewhat surprising and and is it going to change anytime soon? Again, Saquon Barkley unless he busts that big one running the ball, you know, his average little over 2 yards per carry. They threw him the ball 14 times, 14 receptions yeah. in this game, but averaging 5 yards per. So you would think it would be a the possibility of a game changing every time Odell Beckham goes out for a pass, but targeted nine times, just four completions in this one. I, I really am stunned by two things: a that Stanza put in the work, which was great. That's mm-hmm. a nice turn of events for him. Um, but since 2015, yeah, so they, they've gone two full seasons without getting to 30. That's a, they're struggling, and they're going to continue to struggle. Again, that offensive line is already struggling. Now they lose their center, it looks like, uh, to a serious injury. Yeah. They had an air cast on him and carted him off the field. So I don't know where this team is going to go as that O-line tries to gel behind a rookie qu- uh, running back uh, that everybody loves. But, you know, it's, it's very difficult to run if there are no holes. Yep. And, and give this guy credit because when he got the ball a swing pass, he, he made it first. His first guy tackler miss almost every single time. Every single time. But there's only time. so much you can do. I mean, it's a new league here, man. NFL is different. Guys are on you a lot quicker than they are in college, and, and Saquon finds that out. All right, we'll find out what happens with the Giants as having just lost to the Cowboys. They're part of their Texas two-step. Uh, they'll now stay in Texas, I would imagine, because they take on the Houston Texans coming up on Sunday. But we conclude week two of the NFL's regular season with a Monday night game uh, between the Chicago Bears at home taking on the Seattle Seahawks. And talk more about that. We're delighted to be joined by Jason Witten, our ESPN Monday Night Football analyst who is in Chicago getting ready for the game. Uh, Jason, listen, um, as a tight end, I'm sure you're happy you're in the booth now and not trying to chip block on a guy like Khalil Mack coming <laughs> off the edge tonight. How is Seattle going to deal with that first and foremost? Well, they better say a prayer, Trey, and a lot <laughs> of them, you know, and they went against Von Miller, went against Von Miller last week, as Seattle did, and now they got Khalil Mack. I mean, good luck to you on that one. But, I mean, this guy's just dominant. To think that he missed the entire offseason, training camp, gets traded, goes to a new team, and performs like that, and they're going to have to chip, they're going to have to put two guys, and they have to get that ball out quick. So let's let's look at the Seattle, uh, continue to look at the Seattle team, a team that obviously you've, you've just finished playing against 
a number of times to the team that's taking the field now, different from personnel, and plus they have three starters out tonight as well. Just how different is this team than the Legion of Boom and the rest of that Seattle team that you're used to playing against? Well, it, you're right. It, it's a completely different team. When you look at these guys, it's like, I mean, Pete Carroll's got a totally different environment. I mean, they're saying all the right things that there's, you know, they're going back to work, but I mean, it's all on Russell Wilson's back. He has to create these plays, get him outside the pocket. I mean, he's got to be Superman in a lot of ways. The problem is even Doug Baldwin's out too. So his playmakers, uh, this defense is different. They're young. They're beat up. Um, and they don't have that swag, that personality. But you know what? Pete Carroll believes in this system. He thinks that he can get his guys ready to roll. But I just think it's an immense amount of pressure put on Russell Wilson's back. And it forces him to make plays. So it's tough sometimes because he scrambles and he gets the first down and it's high fives. But you know what? He, he scrambled and then was able to spin back around and takes a sack for 16 yards. So how do you high five it and then slap him on the wrist? It's a it's a lot on his back because he's got to make these plays. Uh, this Monday Night Football preview brought to you by Ford Transit, built Ford Tough. As Jason Witten is with us, our Monday Night Football analyst. And, and I think you said the word that I think a lot of people are expecting to hear tonight. Russell Wilson and pressure. Because the one thing that's been a problem for this Seattle team is something that your Dallas team didn't have for the last few years, which was a beat-up offensive line. Now you get Khalil Mack, and you get Floyd, and you get Roquan Smith, that front seven for Chicago, who feasted pretty well against Green Bay in that Sunday night game. This is the classic, Jason, matchup of one team's strength versus another team's weakness. Yeah, it's a completely that, – that's how it's matched up. I mean, Vic Fangio, he knows how to play that. But, you know, there's something about Russell's ability. If anybody can do it in the league, he's one of those guys, those off-script, improvising and creating these plays. I'm just anxious to see the Chicago offense as well. Matt Nagy comes in here. It's the circus offense. He had success with it with Alex Smith. You've seen other teams have success with it. But can, can Mitch Trubisky run that system? And you want to run it, you want to be aggressive – but then you have to check it down underneath. So can Trubisky make the throws and enough of them to score some points? And, you know, that Seattle defense, they're known for turnovers. They find ways to get turnovers. Even though they're young, they fly around, simplify it, and, um, you know, it's going to be a good matchup tonight. You know, you, you look at the receivers now, so many new ones for Chicago from an Allen Robinson to a Taylor Gabriel to a Trey Burton, Anthony Miller, these guys new. So from that aspect, uh, you being, uh, talk about from the receiving part of being a tight end or a receiver now, how, how much of a learning curve is it for a young quarterback and a bunch of new receivers this year to give it some time to see how long it'll take for all these guys to gel? Well, it's, it's a learning curve. But, Mike, like you said, I mean, I think them coming in as new new receivers and adding that to this new system, that helps. Because Trubisky's learning it. Matt Nagy's learning him. You know, it's not Alex Smith. This is a second-year player who had 13 starts in college. So you're giving him all these weapons and you're giving him this new system. How can he handle it? Because there's a lot thrown at him with the personnel groups and the formations and the shifts and it's a zone read. No, it's a keep. I mean, all those things that they want to do with it. I do think that it helps bring in some veteran receivers like Gabriel and Allen Robinson who have played in other systems because they can pick up on it quick, quickly. And, and that's what Nagy said. He says, we want to run the football. We want to attack vertically, but we need some gimmick plays in there too. And that's what they've done. So I just want to see Trubisky, you know, how does he respond? He played pretty well. I mean, to go on the road and to have Green Bay down the way he did and you know, the most impressive drive to me was the field goal right before Aaron Rodgers went down and scored to, to force him to have to score. It was 2017. And he, he caught a lot of heat. So how does he handle this adversity for a young quarterback? He hasn't had a ton of success. Tough loss. We all know the statistics. It's really hard to make the playoffs if you start out 0-2. You know, tonight will be a big test for him. Yeah, and they've got to get more points, Jason. Look, as good as that first half went in that game against Green Bay, they scored only 16 points in that contest because of the the pick six by Khalil Mack, who's off the you know off the world talented. They've got to find a way to get more consistently score points for that offense. Yeah, they have to. I mean, you know that offense is built. They want to run the football, and then all the different things off of it. You know, I mean, and and they have different formations, they have different play actions, but. I think more than anything else, when you get in the red zone, you have to score points. Certainly if you're going against somebody like Aaron Rodgers and in another, on the other side of the ball. So 
I think that's what Nagy's trying to do in, is figure out what are these guys' strengths. It's hard when you're the head coach because there's a lot on your plate. You're the play caller. It's a new system. There's a lot into this system. And then, oh, yeah, when we get in the red zone, we got to find ways to be aggressive. So, you know, they caught a little heat for the third and one decision to call the pass play instead of run it. I think more than anything else, Nagy's he's true to his colors. He, he believes that I'm going to stay aggressive. I'm going to help this young quarterback. And the biggest thing they need to do is in the red zone, they've got to score points. All right, Jason, you played in the league a lot of years, went through a lot of different fashions, I'm sure, through those years. How close in any of your postgame pressers did you get to wearing what Ryan Fitzpatrick wore in his postgame press conference? <laughs> My goodness. You know, that's the closest to Conor McGregor I've ever seen. I mean, the thing was <laughs> unbelievable. I, I, uh, I, um, I felt like there was times where, like, I was aggressive, you know, kind of like kept the undershirt on from, from the game with the sleeves cut out or something. That's probably as aggressive I went with it. I mean, I, I was so excited to see that in his line about the only thing I'm wearing is my chest hair uh, and just drop the mic. But you know what? When you throw for four touchdowns uh, and everybody thinks you're going to start out 0-2 and, and you go 2-0 and and play the way he has, you can do something like that. But, you know, how good are they? Yeah, I mean, Fitzpatrick looks like he's aggressive. They like him, and uh, that's a good offense. Yeah, stay stay away from that outfit. Also, stay away from the Cam Newton costumes that he yeah, wears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> after after performance, no question. Those those no are question. those are interesting to say the least. Jason, we look forward to an interesting game tonight between the Bears and the Seahawks at Soldier Field. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jason. All right, guys. Talk next week. You got it. It's time time to join the millions of people that meet happy with zoom video conferencing zoom gives you flawless video crystal clear audio and instant sharing across any mobile tablet or desktop device but the best thing about zoom it just works so ditch the distractions join the movement and meet happy with zoom video conferencing visit zoom.us to set up your free account today that's zoom.us zoom video conferencing Technology powers your business and technology changes, but chances are you're still using video conferencing that was wow 10 years ago, but feels more like whoa today. Ditch the choppy video and crappy audio and get back to wow with Zoom. It's the easiest, most reliable video collaboration suite, and it costs about a third of what you're probably paying now. Wow, not whoa. Visit zoom.us to set up a free account today. That's zoom.us. Zoom video conferencing. Who won the weekend? Gola Goingo presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Getting a quote is easier than ever. All right, here we go. Gola and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. Whoop! All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. We do it every Monday, Mike, and there are always Quite a few possibilities. Yeah, there's the question is who won the weekend. So some of the uh, people we have out there, Patrick Mahomes becoming the youngest to throw for six touchdowns in one game. He is the real deal. I've said that all along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kid, that's the greatest rejoinder of so all time. Off. You know who would understand me holding off a little bit? Yeah. Is Andy Reid. Sure he, he would. He understands not j- jumping to conclusions. Um, I, I look, we're all, yes, all of that is true. But your, your, your quote was, he's not going to go in there and light it up right away. He's thrown yeah. for more touchdown passes over two yeah. games than anyone ever has. That comment was a mistake. Yeah, just a little bit. Ryan Fitzpatrick becoming the first Bucks quarterback to throw for four touchdowns back-to-back games. And he has nine touchdowns total because he has a running, running one. Touchdown the only as person well. with more is Pat Mahomes. LSU beating number 7 Auburn in Auburn. Now yeah. two wins over two top 10 teams. First- Blake uh, go ahead. First time in 37 years the team has what done that done. first three weeks. Blake Bortles throwing for 337, four touchdowns and win over the Patriots. He also ran for 35 yards. Yep. Your guy? Uh, Zlatan. Yeah. 500th career goal, joining Ronaldo and Messi as the only active players to achieve that feat. <clears throat> and we say that with a caveat. We believe they're the only ones to actually have done it because right. records aren't really kept. So really, it's those three and that's really it. Pretty impressive. You got yeah. Canelo Alvarez who beat Triple G by majority decision to take the unified middleweight world championship. Get ready for the next one. An, I thought it was a really good fight and yeah. I paid 84 bucks for it and I'll pay 84 bucks again for the next one because it will the be way, the next one. You just did a professional broadcasting. Oh, board. I'm letting you do this one, man. You're, <laughs> you're just, way better than names there with we go. me. Okay. He just passed over this one. This is it. To me. Uh, also on the list, Ilioid Kipchoge set a new record in the marathon by running the Berlin race. Mike, in two this is sick. hours, one minute, 39 seconds. He beat the old mark by a minute and 18 seconds. Stanzik, you're our runner. What, what is it? What is that? A, a mile? Split. 
438. Four, oh. He ran 26 miles in 438 a mile. Correct. That is rude. Uh, that's, that is rude. You know what that means? We're getting to the point where we're going to have a sub two hour. Oh, marathon. there's no doubt about it. You got, got a sub two hour. Knock marathon. off another, and, and it's probably this guy going to do it. He's what, 33 years old, yeah, right? I'm looking at Kip Chick. He doesn't even sweating as he's coming through. It's the thing. ridiculous. He had room to spare. Four minutes and 38 seconds a mile. First of all, it's it's an, it's so impressive. I can't even get my head around. it. I can't either. I, that's Second, like space to me. I yeah. can't I can't grasp that. Secondly, why anyone would want to torture themselves that way, I don't understand. Because the training. I mean, my wife yes. ran one, the New York <clears throat> Marathon, and the training for it was absurd. So these people that run marathons all the time, they have to run all the time, yeah. all the time. I, I, that blows my mind. So is, is this guy probably seems to be the good bet to finally break two hours. Yeah. That's unreal. I, I He's not winning the weekend no, for me, but I salute dude, congrats, everything. man. I, I don't even know what to say. I, I salute you in every yeah. way, shape, or form because I know I could never I'll raise a glass it. for you, but yeah. I'm giving it to LSU. You're going to LSU? I'm giving it to LSU for going to Auburn, being up 10-zip in that one, and then in the third quarter down 21-10, to 10, on the road, all the momentum is against you. It's all with Auburn, and then you have the ability to come back from that one, not only to win it, but hit a game-winning field goal. Uh, I mean, it's just to me was an incredible it was an incredible game and a huge win for LSU. Now sitting at three and zero and sitting at number six in the country. Yeah, it, it's so hard, I'm, I'm going to go with that. It's hard to argue. I came down to two, and I'm really having a hard time choosing. But I think I'm going to have to go. With football and not football. Um, I really wanted to give it to Blake Bortles. Because yeah. basically last week they said, here's a third and six. We can seal the game with the Giants. They ran a dive play. Right. They were like, you are not going to let us win. This past week they said, Blake, open it up in the in the second half. Let's take down New England. And they did it. However, any other week I would give it to Blake. But when my guy's Laton does what Zlatan did. Ah, it's your buddy. Did you see the flick of the heel? It's, ridiculous. On the, it's insane. Yeah. And of course, I, I, we all need more Zlatan in our lives because they needed, they lost the game. I think they're out of the playoff race, but they said, do you feel the pressure? He goes, I'm Zlatan. I do not feel pressure. And they said, what about your teammates? He said, I will take their pressure. I will take all the teammates pressure and put it on myself. So they will not feel any pressure. He's at all. a content gem. Oh my God. He is the gift in social media that keeps on giving. Time and time yep. again. Fantastic. So I got to give it to my guy's lot on Big Z, as he's called. The goal was incredible. It's, I mean, it's just a little flick just of the heel. Unbelievably incredible how he did it. So yeah. very cool. So that's your winner. There I, you go. I will go with Zlatan. Blake, I feel for you. If Zlatan had not done that, yeah. you were going to win it. Yeah. All right. So we got the big Monday night game. Real quick, who are you taking? I'm going Chicago. I think that offense will take the next step with the new weapons. Seattle, different team, and the down some players. I'm going with the Bears as well. We'll see you tomorrow. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified. 